My favorite thing about the Oscars in 2020 was that if you didn't see Midsommar, you didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. Brunch! Hit it, boys! It's Monday, and people are pissed. It's actually Monday for the first time in forever. And people have got to be pissed. Let's face it. You got you got politics. You got <laughs> Bong Joon-ho on a bunch of stuff. Some people are pretty upset about that. Yes, who's not? The people sitting at this table. Oh, man. This was a... Uh, I still don't really know how to use Instagram stories. Every... I don't post anything on an Instagram story for like two months, and then I'll be like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be one of these Instagram story people. And there are like 55 different types of Instagram story people. And we should do that one day. We should just go through the type of Instagram story people. Well, there's like the every second of my life Instagram story people. (laughs) There's the informative Instagram story people where they'll like tell you things in your Instagram story. Like the work that people use it for work. Right. Exactly. You're like, okay, this is, I'm actually becoming, I'm, I'm taking something away from Instagram. This was a pleasant surprise. There are the people uh, who like share other people's stuff on their Instagram story. Yes. I've, beca- I've started becoming one of those. Exactly. So the, this is the type of uh, person I, I think uh, it was, it was right to be yesterday, which is the just share pictures of, ba- uh, of <laughs> Bong Joon Ho. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I I could have done like fifty five of them. Yeah, I think that that uh, yeah, there was a lot of stuff that went around. Whether it was like quotes from Bong Joon Ho, whether yeah. it was just cool ass pictures of Bong Joon Ho, which I did not know existed, but oh. apparently there are tons of them. Oh, you're crazy! Every picture of Bong Joon Ho is cool. But like, there are like Bong Joon Ho pictures where Bong Joon Ho is like, I'm gonna be cool in this one. Oh, and then really? There, and then there are other ones where Bong Joon Ho is just like. I'm Bong Joon Ho, so it's inherently cool. He is the coolest person in the world, and let me tell you why. <laughs> he doesn't put if if I did not put one thing in my hair ever, and I don't really put anything in my hair, uh, but I, I put a little something. I put a little something. Yeah. I do like a, a once over with it, so it's got so it's got a little weight and stuff, so I can move it around as I as I'd like to. He and I probably have the same length hair thereabouts. His is what it looks like. What, like, thick, longish hair looks like if you just don't do shit to it. Yep. It just flops out, and you've, you've need, you really need a level of confidence that I'll never even come near to be able to pull that off. Because oh, yeah. his he, hair he, looks it, fucking awesome. Yeah, and he was, like, he was, like, all about it on Sunday, too. Like, he was flopping it around. He was running his hands through it. Like, he owns that look, and good and for him. And it's a totally and, unique look. Yeah, and uh, Sunday's was a, was a huge uh, appreciation of, of hair, because Hair Love won for Best sh- uh, Animated Short. That's right. I didn't watch any of the animated shorts. I watched series. Hair Love today, and it's uh, pretty, pretty good. And so now, animated shorts, I believe, are cuter than live oh, action sure. shorts live action shorts i had to have mentioned this last year are traumatizing yeah. i will never watch another again and i've, I've seen some live action shorts there's one that jet blue used to show all the time about a guy who like became cupid and he used it to make a girl that he had a crush on fall in love with him it was very about time me mm-hmm. where it's like is this okay right like you're <laughs> this guy just Loves this person and wants to be in love with them, but I'm pretty sure he's like tricking somebody who's not supposed to be in love with him yeah. into being in love with him. Anyway, it was a cute little thing. I've seen that a million times. Really, I guess most of the live action shorts I've ever seen have been on jet blue planes because they show those sometimes. But live action shorts are generally, and I didn't know this until a couple of years ago, they're made to get the most feeling out of you in the shortest amount of time. So when you've only got like five to ten minutes to work with, they just do some horrifying shit in front of you, and then you're scarred. And I think it's so cheap. And well, I mean, at the end of the day, that's basically what all like film is about. Exactly. <laughs> but this one has less time to do it, so right. they've got to do something crazy. And at least in the case of the nominees in 2019, all of them were just like killing kids. <laughs> and 
I wasn't crazy about that. For my brand, that's uh, might be up my even, alley. Even you, you wouldn't have been <laughs> okay know. with that. I mean, I love I that's love making crazy. fun of kids. I love making fun of adults who use kids to try to be cool. Like, remember the... Oh, man, the scoring internet points by using your kids thing is not even that. huge the, in the streets uh, these days. The, this art class came together and made this project. Each one of them drew a little thing, and when combined, it looked like, and it's like, I don't know, it's like Kevin Durant or something. And, like, l- look at the, like, the brilliance of, of these kids. And it was like, no, an art teacher organized this whole thing, <laughs> have, gave these kids little tasks to do that they were able to do because they were little easy tasks, and then this art teacher put it all together for a bunch of credit. Mm-hmm. Very weird. Very stupid. Don't do stuff like that. So it's okay to make fun of kids in those types of situations, but tell you what, not the way they make fun of kids in short live action uh, short films. It's those true. they just make fun of them not being alive anymore. And for sure, don't take my advice on when it's appropriate to make fun of kids. Yeah, Twitter's crazy, huh? <laughs> Any whom, uh, the Oscars were last night, so we're recording today on a Monday, so we can get some of the... the fee- it would be weird on, like, Thursday to be like, what do you think of the Oscars? So be like trying to conjure up the, the feelings that we had today. Exactly. So, uh, for, I mean, the biggest takeaway, the show, terrible. The, sh- the show itself was was bad. See, I thought it was a clean, not bad show. I thought that altered that for the most part, with the exception of, I don't know, like maybe we maybe just don't give uh, speeches to best actor and best actress because <laughs> those were the really those were the only real clunkers that happened. And both yeah, of them, but both of them like, were still very well intentioned. But that's what I want. Like I, I, ah, I you want, want, more I want that. the speeches. Like, I come want, on, Laura Dern. I want start the, saying some dumb yeah, shit. I want the weird ass speeches to be like, what the hell is this person going on about? And we got we got a good amount of that during the Golden Globes. I thought the Golden Globes was like a better overall show. Um, okay. And I like the the most memorable thing about the Oscars, like the day after, was was Eminem performing, and that was just right. like totally inexplicable. They've got to get rid of musical performances in all award shows. I don't even want them in the Grammys. All I care about in the Grammys, I don't is know about that. Album of the year, record of the year, song of the year. I'm, I may be overstating it. Make it like two to three performances max. Yes, especially at the Oscars. And if you do that at the Grammys, if there are only three performances in the Grammys, those are going to be like the Super Bowl halftime show. That's There's true. going to be such a build up. Who gets picked for it? And what and would you be get good like to five see? Five minutes. Right. Yeah. Like, and if you want, I don't and, know what it is now. It's probably like what, like three minutes, three and a half minutes. Uh, I don't know. Like, They're probably like yeah. four-ish. Yeah. Um, but if you want to do the classic Grammys thing of mashing up a bunch of people. Cool, you can do that because you only got three performances to work with. They're each, uh, I don't know, seven to ten minutes long. So really lean into it. Instead of like every two seconds, yeah, they bring out a, all right, now here's a little big town and Usher doing whatever. And you're like, do they know, do they know each other? Like, do they like each other's music? Are they, did, was, was this at all organic or was this forced? So in general... Cut down on the music performances, Especially but in the Oscars, the Oscars. zero. It's, well, I, I'm okay with it when it's when it's like a uh, a really big music thing from the past year. They had none of that this year. Right. They, they had. I mean, I know that it was a weak year in terms of uh, best original song. Oh boy, it was, was it super super weak. A lot of those songs. Stunk. But when that happens. Just to say, okay, super weak year for best original song. We're not going to have any performances. But like well, last year when you had uh, Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga, right. that was totally fine. If this year, if they wanted to have Taron Egerton do it with Elton John, I don't know why they didn't yes, do that. That's that would have been that would have been totally fine. fine. I would have had them do a different song. Sure, but and I know that and it, that way, if you if it's just if you just do Taron and Elton, it's not it's not about best original song. They could say now here from the nom- like Rocket Man is up for what was Rocket Man up for? Just best original song, I believe so. Yowzers, not even costume design. I don't that's, think so. No, yeah, it definitely wasn't for costume design. But that's 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 rough. Uh, 
then it's just like a little, hey, let's shine a light on this movie. Shine a light, shine a light, shine a light. Won't you shine a light? Philadelphia Freedom. You got Taron doing Philadelphia Freedom. Everyone's like, I don't think Philadelphia Freedom was in that movie. They're like, well, uh, you're simple and you only know the Elton songs that are from the movie Rocket Man. Get out of here. Like, you know, I'm going to love me again and you don't know Philadelphia Freedom. Shut up and listen to Taron. I bet you're also uh, distracted by Bob Odenkirk and Little Women. Right, not like me. An Did they show Bob Odenkirk in the audience at any point? I think so. Because I, th- I, I think there was some. Uh, we, we watched the Oscars together, and uh, by the way, long overdue thing, not just for the Oscars, but for anything that we know we're constantly going to be texting for. I think this was other than like a sporting event, the first time we were like, let's both sit in the same room during <laughs> yeah. it. I don't know why that like it never happened before. Yeah, but can we, I say we live like fifteen minutes apart? It was probably the best party I've ever attended. <laughs> it was because it wasn't a party. Right. It was you, me, and Jeff doing some za. Oreos were in the mix. Sitting on the couch. Sitting on the couch. We had we had some laptops going. If anyone yeah. needed to to bang out some some content, it was just easy. Nobody was talking at the wrong parts. I don't think any of us missed anything. Apparently, although we missed Bob Odenkirk, uh, but we did notice when things happened that piqued Bruntouchable's interest because we would both get like alerts at the same time of like, and I think that some people did tweet at us like Bob Odenkirk exclamation point. And I was like that they must've shown <laughs> Bob Odenkirk. Uh, but I, I, th- I thought that the show itself was, was mostly clean and harmless. I'll tell you what my favorite thing about the Oscars was what? by far. Yes. Number one, you've been counting down for a while. You've been wondering what one's going to be. My favorite thing about the Oscars in 2020 was that if you didn't see Midsommar, you didn't get it. (laughs) I love that Midsommar ended up being important. I do love that they opened up the the Oscars with like a musical number that featured like 80% of movies that were not even nominated. Right, but they were like, these movies are dope. You you called out right away. You were like, uh, the the first thing you're drawn to is uh, the... the, the, uh, the jumpsuit. No, the uh, the the midsummer attire. What would that be called? Like the floral, the, like the the the, the, the floral frock explosion. or whatever it's <laughs> called. What like this this painfully white thing with all with like all the flowers on it? And you're like midsummer, mm-hmm. and then you're like, yo, they got the queen and slim stuff up there too. And it was like, oh shit, this is all of like the really good movies that really didn't get any love, which. Which I like. I I meant to see, did uh, Natalie Portman had the names of uh, directors, women directors who obviously weren't nominated because Mm -hmm. there were no women nominated for Best Director this year. Yeah. By the way, uh, Natalie Portman Portman is like on the verge of getting, uh, I don't want to say canceled, but like people are like, yeah, watch out for Natalie Portman. It's all an act. Really? Because uh, her production company, somebody dug up the receipts. Uh Oh. Only two movies in her production company history have been directed by a woman, and they have been both by Natalie Portman. Oh, yikes. Man, that's fucked. But I, th- I think that this is me seeing the good in everybody. I think that she'd not considered that when she did that. She which is probably a, should which, have. Like, I mean, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. You, I mean, if, 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 you want, if, you, if you've got the means to make change... That and you and you'd like there to be change, then I think that sure, naturally I think, people I think are going you to gotta, say. I think you got to do it yourself before you like preach to everybody else. So that's that's what I'm saying. If you've if if you're somebody who wants change of any type, right? And, that's legal, and you've got the means <laughs> to do it. Then be part of the solution. Then then you you are in a a great situation. Mm-hmm. You are in a perfect uh, situation right to enact place. that change. Follow your own advice. Yeah, interesting. Well, I'm going to let that one marinate. I think that while it's understandable for people to be like hypocrite, et cetera, et cetera, I'm, I'm going to start with the head and heart, et cetera. Et cetera. I'd say heart may be in the right place. Mm-hmm. Head not, uh, not executing it. Anyway, uh, I, was, I wanted to see what names were on her, or her, um, her clothing. Mm-hmm. I'm really struggling to say clothes today <laughs> which is struggled on wild because it's always on your mind always uh 
Was that a reference to something? No, I think that you're just like clothes guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> clothes are pretty dope. Um, I was wondering if her thing said Melina Matsukas on it. Did it? I don't. I didn't see. Oh, okay. And I didn't want to be like a person who's like zooming in on Natalie Portman's clothing. I feel like my computer would just be like, Ew, "Gotcha." <laughs> yeah. The worst part about Parasite winning a bunch of stuff was going to be oh, the, people, the bad Parasite takes. Yes, Jeff. Jeff said that now we're going to get that La La Land pushback, mm-hmm. and. I've seen a little bit of it, mainly from our guy, Jim Murray, who I have to respect the position he's in. He did spoil it on Twitter, which is very messed up. Uh, Spoiled uh, Parasite? Parasite. Mm. Should, can, can I spoil it now and say what he said? Well, he, so he said this. Uh, oh, well, come on. The movie wasn't that good. You could see blank coming from a mile away which no and then had a star and then put an asterisk at the end of it and then an asterisk that said oops spoilers <laughs> oh, no. which i don't know i like that move I like when you're it, right it, when you're yeah. spoiling something i mean nothing's funny classic us move right exactly when you're the one that's spoiling nothing's funnier but yeah. if you're not the exact person who's doing it you see it and you're like yo that's really <laughs> fucked man because if you're spoiling something as the spoiler it, there's like a, a huge chance that it's because you don't like it right. or like you don't care about anybody else's interest in it. Yeah. And, or in our case, it's a hilarious opportunity. <laughs> you got to take it. You got to make a name for your podcast. Right. Um, so I can respect the position that Jim Murray is in, which was he thought that it was good, not great. And I'm a big uh, proponent of, if you think something's good and everybody thinks that it's the best, you're not bad or you're not being a contrarian or you're not being an asshole if you say it was good. Yeah, you're just speaking and your truth. good is enjoyable and this is how much I enjoyed it. I would say I'll usually throw on at the end. I'm very happy that so many people enjoyed it more than I did because mm-hmm. it means that they got a lot of a joy yeah. out of something and that's and that's fantastic. Jim's not exactly doing that. Jim's probably a little more more uh, defiant towards people who loved it, but I very much respect standing your ground when you say that something was good, someone else counters, wasn't it the best? And you say no, it wasn't. It was good. Yeah, I'm totally okay with that. Like like what you like, ha- hold your own opinion. And for me like the only thing is, it's like if you're going to comment on the movie, you're going to comment on the win, you're going to chime in, make sure you've seen everything. Oh, that's yeah. That's I've the been. big one. That's, that's the golden been. rule. Yeah. That might be like the like brunch's golden rule. Yeah. It's it's all spawned from award show stuff, but... Which is funny because like we, we just definitely made up made, Don't Knock Until You Try It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've been... Uh, we've we've definitely like in the past commented on stuff for... Or, oh, yeah. We shouldn't w- have uh, done a... Not, what was it called? We shouldn't have done an Emmys episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, was mostly to us talking about the fact that we hadn't seen everything. Right. We're like, let's talk about the Emmys. Have you seen any of that? It was, no. It was no, us no, saying, no. like, we're totally not qualified to be talking about this right now. That's true. We were always brilliant. Yes. It, it, so, like, it, the, I've seen so many, like, this is, oh, Parasite shouldn't have won for this reason, this reason, this reason. Uh, also, like, I haven't seen it. No, Nobody's seen it, and I'm never going right. to see it. Oh, that, that's I did see a bunch of that. You got to know. No one's going to watch this movie just because they gave it this award. Like, a lot of people did watch this movie. That's why so many people are happy. Right. It was hard it. to see. It was awesome. It, it, you did have to seek it out over the summer. Yeah. And it was entirely worth doing. But guess what? It was nominated for Best Picture, and it's been on demand for, like, the last three, four weeks. Yes. So I'm, I guarantee a, a shitload of people just watched it in the wet past week or two who didn't go out and seek it out during the summer. Yes. This was the biggest year for me. I guess this is like just getting to a, a dorkier and dorkier place, but it can't qualify as dorky because I still maintain, don't know anything uh, about movies just because I've seen more of them over the years. Uh, this is year six of me seeing all the Oscar noms. Mm -hmm. And it started with just having time between Bruins, Morning Skate, and Games. So I just go knock out a movie at Boston Common. Very lovely time. Now, though, this year... And it's always like you just get in under... You just barely see them all. It was like maybe a day or two before you're cramming. I, like, rewatched 
some of these movies probably like I would say that like, I probably had like ten total rewatches. Damn. But by the time yeah. that, I, that, that these popped up, I had like a handful, which yeah. I, I never do that. Right. I never you, rewatch. You, you, right. You're just, it's just like you're just barely getting in under the wire. I don't rewatch like period. Like like I very rarely rewatch a movie within a year unless I fucking loved it like the peanut butter falcon right would have been the only movie that i'd rewatched probably um i mean i'm sure there was a couple that i'd seen here and there but the reason why i rewatched so many best pictures because they were readily available Mm -hmm. and i wanted other people to see them like i watched with other people and i saw 1917 on sunday morning because i went to the movie theater with my mom jealous and uh and so like such a good year for movies. I was totally down to see a bunch of these best pictures again, and yeah. I wanted other people to see them before the Oscars on Sunday. Yeah, man. Between, I don't know, Jojo Rabbit, I've, I've just been like... I bought it. Co- yeah, same. It's mm. just been like constantly on in my crib, just constantly <laughs> playing. Jo- I've, I've basically just either been wa- re-watching Jojo Rabbit or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at... Uh, at all times. But I, I mean, I saw a marriage story a few times. I saw, uh, I don't know. I, I guess that there's always some rewatching going on. I saw Midsommar. I've probably seen Midsommar like five times now. And that's crazy. Cold that pursuit. So long. <laughs> cold. cold. I, I didn't realize that I was watching it, uh, on. So I, I have, I, I do own Midsommar, but it's on Apple TV, which I have to, which is confusing, and I have to like plug it into my TV and shit, so I don't really access that. Um, so I was watching it on, and the only reason I bought that it on Apple TV is because Apple TV is the only way you could get the director's cut. Okay. So I fired up Midsommar the other day on Prime Video, and it was like two twenty four, and I was like, oh shit, they got the director's cut. No, I didn't realize Midsommar is a super long movie. Yeah, dude, it's so long. Let me see. Midsommar runtime, 218. That is, that's like a, that's a movie. That is a, that is a very long movie. Uh, that's actually shorter than I expected, though. I mean, maybe it's because you just said 224 or whatever. But like, well, uh, the director's cut's what, like 20, 25 minutes longer? Probably, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that movie's long. It's, it's just and extra, it's, and it's, we've already made this joke. It's just an extra 25 minutes of Mark. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> does anybody, uh, Twitter users, does anybody understand that when we tweet that from, I guess it's either the brunch account or I, I'm probably like a bigger Mark stand. Stan would be the wrong word. I'm fascinated by Mark. and I like making jokes about Mark. Uh when you see a tweet from either the brunch account or like uh, a dumb thing I do that says, oh, my God, do you understand that that is Mark? Yes or no? Also, I mean, uh, the, the, the the great Twitter game of guessing who sends, sends a tweet from brunch that's is becoming, becoming a, a thing. That's becoming a real thing. I will say this. I like people guessing who tweeted stuff, but I don't like people. Um, I had an instance of it yesterday. I put something. Oh, I put out our our ranking of the movies, mm-hmm. and immediately there was uh, someone responded and said, "Team Pete." Someone quote tweeted it with DJ nailed this, and I like that. Th- those are both complimentary and stuff, and that's cool. But and I almost did like a soapboxy thing, so I didn't like have your own order. You know, have your own order. What do you mean? Oh, like, uh, don't, like, like, you don't have to pick a side. Right, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. And, I don't know, maybe I would have felt differently about it if it was, yeah. like, a barrage of, like, fuck DJ. <laughs> he only put 1917 sixth because he knew that Pete put uh, 1917 one, which I did see a little fan fiction about that. And I was like, ah, eh, maybe, maybe subconsciously I wanted to, to, to rock the boat. But, uh, I don't know. And I think that when you say, like, oh, uh, Pete did a good job with this, DJ did a good job with this, you are saying that, like, you have your own list and that it matches up more with one person than yeah. the others. But, I mean, the whole point of all this is to hashtag find your list. Be yourself. Yeah. Find, find your list. I like that. Hashtag like, find your like list. A, that's like a Super Bowl commercial. Yeah. You know, with, like, a nice little inspiring message at the end. It's like a Dove commercial the on the about, Super Bowl. <laughs> here's the thing about Diet Coke. <laughs> it's delicious. Is it poisoning me? I don't know. Because I'm just going out doing things that I want to do because I'm free. Diet Coke. Find your list. 
<laughs> That's so good. Oh man, That's, that was a complete ripoff. Of, uh, the only reason I remember uh, that those Diet Coke commercials is <laughs> like for like two or three episodes. Time Crisis was very invested in those Diet Coke ads, <laughs> and like, what is Diet Coke doing here? They have like the impossible task of rebranding when everybody is aware that. Diet culture is really has really fallen by the wayside, yeah. for better or worse. Um, and also, that I think that it's well known that Diet Coke is in fact not good for you. Yeah. Probably not. Probably Diet Coke is definitely worse for you than uh, than I believe so. Correct? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So they uh, <laughs> they they had a lot of fun with that, just like exploring the the Gillian Jacob commercials <laughs> and, and such in like a very non hating way, but. Whenever I think of like a crazy commercial now, I think of here's the thing about Diet Coke. It's delicious. <laughs> uh, Actually, I don't know. I, I never really fuck with Diet Coke. No, it's like an old people thing. Uh, yeah, but like the so the Oscars, uh, getting back to my original point in like the first like two minutes of the, the episode. Yeah, the show sucked. But for like the first time ever. I'm not mad by from a single award. Oh, I know. We were so that was a it was just a very positive time watching those awards. We were on board with everything that won. Really, uh, didn't some of the sound stuff we didn't really care too much about. Ferrari, we were kind of the indifferent. Ford versus Ferrari. I was like, I knew that it was going to win because right. it has cars and, it, right. and if you shout into a mic, vroom 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 for like 80 minutes, and right. then you're gonna win an Oscar. Randy put it as like, who do you think's gonna win the uh, best loud noise <laughs> <laughs> or like uh, best loud sound? Yeah, uh, no, I, I, I like the stuff that won that I that I was kind of rooting against. Like, like it was so painfully obvious that that those things were gonna win. Like Joaquin Phoenix, I was kind of, of hoping for for Adam Driver, but like I understood that Joaquin Phoenix was probably gonna win, and you know he, I think that like to a, uh, a good extent, like he deserved that award and it wasn't like a bad performance. No. So like, I think that they got it right almost everywhere. So do I. Um, and when the parasite thing was really happening and we, we bet on the Oscars and I was, I kept checking Bovada because once, uh, once parasite got a little momentum, um, in what, Original screenplay, I think, was the first, oh, wait, this could be a Parasite night. Mm -hmm. And once we kind of had that in our heads, the night just became so much more exciting. And again, just sitting there doing, like, pizza and chips. But it was exciting. Because we were like, "What what if Parasite just fucking wins everything? And when Best Director was announced we let out shrieks <laughs> it was like audible gas because it was like this is for real this is happening play. and then as soon as uh we we'd both bet we didn't bet like huge amounts but i think the biggest amount that either of us bet that was my biggest bet was bong joon bong joon yeah. and i was i locked him in plus 550 a couple weeks ago you got him at like 300 three so it's not bad, but right. Like, it's man, still, it's about half of what you got, which I'm pretty well, upset about. I, I don't know. You, so you were kicking yourself. You bet more than me, uh, right. and I, I bet less than you, and we both won roughly the same amount of money, right? But, but, but we, we, so we were both we kicking both ourselves. Had, we, well, we both, yeah. But we also both had the like the the takeaway that he's the best bet at the yes. same time. Yeah, I just waited longer to make my bet, and it ended up biting me in the ass. It's crazy. Uh, I don't know if uh, this is this will be different next year or something. Making my bets early on the Oscars was well. There was extremely uh, beneficial. Yeah, because there was so much chalk this year, and it doesn't that doesn't usually go that way. Okay, where like every now categ- chalk to the non betters means it means that there's like a an overwhelming favorite in the category. Brad and that, Pitt. Yeah, and that doesn't usually happen. Mm-hmm. Um, right when things open, it's, it's usually the line will shift uh, as it gets closer to the awards, but yeah. like. There's this year. It was hard to find ones that that like. Oh, this is great value because there was like an overwhelming favorite in almost every category. Interesting. It did shift. Um, so, Parasite for Best Picture was the one that ended up shifting the most. When I when I bet it, it was plus three hundred to win, which means ten dollar bet gets you thirty dollars and. 
1917 was the heavy favorite. It was like 1917 was like minus 300 or something. So, um, but as the award show was going on, Best Picture started moving like crazy. And by the time, I mean, by the time Bong Joon Ho won Best Director, uh, I think that uh, Parasite was like was the favorite at minus something and you would get like awesome odds on mm-hmm. 1917. And I thought we were talking about, it. I was like, should I like hedge my, because I I've bet on parasite. Should I hedge my bet and bet a little on 1917? And we were both like, no parasite is going to win. Yeah. And then yeah, parasite I, won. I, I doubled down on parasite. I bet uh, on parasite after uh screenplay and it got, it was at plus one fifty. Really yeah. interesting. Now I, I wish that I had done that. It was really once we saw, uh, once we saw Bong Joon Ho win Best Director. A, it was the happiest moment of our lives, and B, it was so clear that they were going to get it right. And that we, I mean, award shows are silly, and your, I mean, like ranking art and stuff and scoring it and saying this art wins and this art loses. It's all is arbitrary. A very silly, arbitrary endeavor. But I don't know when you see like it feels what you good. think is the best thing yeah. to win. You're that's like a very happy feeling. Because, I mean, like you're rooting for those people. Like those people gave you enjoyment over the past year. Totally. And it's very important to them. Like they pour their lives into it, and you want to see them rewarded, especially when they're like very seemingly very nice people, like Bong Joon Ho. Yeah, and like it's it's a very cool thing to see that. But like also, it's very cool in like this win, not only because. Parasite was such an awesome movie that I think deserves a ton of credit, and it was it's an awesome thing to see it win because like nobody thought that it could because of the way that the the Oscars and the Academy operates right. And so like not only is it amazing for this movie that came out this year that we all loved, uh, but it's amazing for like the future of possibly what it could mean for other movies that you would initially like rule out of contention totally at the Oscars. I would say, I mean the last two years, two of my favorite movies, um, I, I, I suppose three, if you include parasite, but the last two years of having to watch all these movies, some three of the, the real standouts and real standout, I would say meaning like, I don't know, top 10-ish, maybe a little outside of it. Like, Parasite was, like, hands down the la- the best movie this past year. Mm-hmm. But Pain and Glory, I thought, was in maybe, like, the that third tier, somewhere in, like, the 10 to 20 range. Uh, the Cold War last year freaking ruled. But And I remember when I saw Cold War, I was like, why wouldn't this be nominated this year? And it just isn't. So I, I don't know. I think that that not even with like not even with uh, like foreign films or uh, international films now. We should yes. say uh, not only Which not we, we were kicking that around. We were like, how are they ever calling it yeah. foreign? Well, I mean, yeah, how long, how did it take that long? I guess right. Um, no, and not even just that, but also the fact that like over the past couple of years, the Oscars has seemed to at least broaden its uh, its like criteria for like for what, best picture, right? Like, like what's best Black picture? Panther got in right. as a superhero movie, right. and then like Get uh, Out, Get Out like which thriller, defied genre, yeah. and, and so they've it, they op- at least opened it up the category, but we both went into like the, into those years being like, there's no way that there's a very little chance that get out wins because it's not an Oscars movie. It's not a best picture movie. And like black Panther, we were like, not only was it not the best movie of the year, but like it's a comic book movie. It's not going to win. Right. But now it sort of becomes the, the conversation where it's like, well, it's a comic book movie, but if it is the best movie of the year, maybe it'll, it'll get rewarded as such because Parasite had a lot of things stacked against it, uh, being a foreign language film, being uh, a very like, genre-defying right. movie. Thriller slash, like, dark comedy. Right, and uh, and it won anyway. So it, that's that's something that opens it up for the rest of... Uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Yeah, <laughs> also... Like, it's um, exciting. Right. I'm also going to update my take on... That hopefully more foreign film. Uh, there I go. Uh, more international films get consideration because last year I forgot that Roma was nominated. You're right. Yeah, yeah. But Ro- I mean, in Roma, I thought was good to very good. I w- I wasn't as blown away 
by it. As Roma other for people. me was like a lot of people's 1917 this year, where it's like got an unbelievable uh, technical right. achievement, but right. like story didn't do it for me. Right, and there were scenes like there, there were a couple scenes in Roma that were just I- incredible. But right. uh, I, I yeah I, I loved uh, Cold War last year, and I'd wish that, that got a little more love. I'm probably going to go revisit that movie. But you you are right; they are expanding what they're considering, which is cool because as as uh, got to see every movie people now, we're probably going to have our eyes opened to some more w- weird shit. I mean, even uh, Jojo Rabbit being nominated is kind of crazy. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Uh, it, like, it's one, it's a comedy. Right. I mean, obviously, it's like a dark comedy with a bit more of a story to it, but like, it's a comedy. It's also like a very dangerous comedy. Sure. If you watch the first five minutes of Jojo Rabbit, <laughs> where he's sitting in his room and then talking to his pause. imaginary friend Hitler, who is... I mean, Taika Waititi is playing the most cartoonish, ridiculous version of this idiot. And But he's, it's, he's so cartoonish and crazy that you're like, this was this is nominated for best picture. Just yeah, heads up. Dude, like watch the first twenty minutes of that movie. Even after they like go through the the yeah. Nazi youth camp scenes, yeah. and then press pause and be like, "Yo, this this movie was nominated for best picture." People will be like, "What the hell are you talking?" We about? had this conversation. Somebody uh, somebody asked you whether you felt nineteen seventeen was better than Dunkirk. You passed that along yeah, to my boss. to the boys. My boss, Nick it, Parko. And I was like, oh, that's not even a question. 1917 is, I think, a million times better than Dunkirk. I agreed. And he did not. He called me crazy. So is, I don't know. I I wonder if there's, I wonder how people feel about that. Because Dunkirk was very beloved. I didn't think it was that good. I thought it was much better on the second watch. I I liked the movie a lot. Um, but 1917 really did it for me. And that just goes to show you that this year, this year doesn't just happen. You know, this is a year to be a year in film to be celebrated. And I'm so glad that Eminem could help us do that. That was such, uh, I mean, my jaw was on the floor. I couldn't believe it. He's, he's doing you lose yourself. <laughs> it was anytime you can celebrate a, one of the best years in movies in a long time. You got to celebrate a movie from 2002. We're all going to remember where we were when Eminem <laughs> came out. And did lose yourself. I was uh, was doing some pizza and chips with <laughs> with Pete and Jeff, and it was just an incredible moment. I uh, I I got to ask you. Here's a question that I brought into this episode: What wins the award for uh, the movie that generated the worst takes in 2019? Ooh, I mean, the obvious one would be Joker. Yeah, but that that was pre-release. Not a lot of bad takes about Joker since it was released, right. though. Oh, that's like see. over the whole cycle. What movie had the like the the worst takes? That's such a good question. Uh, does it have to be? And I guess we could include today too, because like there's been a lot of bad right. well, we're parasite finding takes. Out, we're finding out the parasite people have some some really stupid takes. And like you've seen, you've been angered by the reception to the Irishman, which by the way won zero awards. Yes. Oh, that that was an easy. There, there were uh, Bovada had like special specials where you could uh, bet oh, like over under than, yeah. how many awards for each movie. And let me see where uh, Irishman was. Uh, I didn't even end up. Oh, it was just will the Irishman win any awards? And yes, was plus two fifty, and. That was a bet that I absolutely didn't touch because it was, of course, not going to win any awards. Uh, I don't know. I think Ford versus Ferrari yielded some really predictable eye rolling takes. Where the, if if Ford versus Ferrari's target audience saw Ford versus Ferrari, they couldn't understand how anybody could call any movie other than Ford versus Ferrari the best movie this past year. Like I've I've gotten when I tweet out. When I've tweeted out like what movies I thought were really good rankings and everything, there have been a few people who, and I'm God bless, like whatever you want, who are like Ford versus Ferrari number one. That's the end of the list. I'm like, hmm. okay, you really, you really like Ford versus <laughs> Ferrari, and I did too. I just for for I, I loved it for what it was. Uh, I I don't know. I'm stalling now because I don't know. Jojo Rabbit has gotten a, a lot of flack. Yeah. 
Uh, I think that people... People are uncomfortable with, like, the idea of praising anything or, like, having any sort of comedy right, that's Nazi associated combination. With, right. And... Which I get, but, like, also watch the movie and try to understand, like, the, the direction and, like, the, the the way that they executed that. And Agree. I yeah. I don't, th- I don't think there's uh, a right or wrong answer to that, but I do think that, at least for, for me, one of the things that impressed me about the movie was that it didn't... It was that it, it, it? I thought it towed that line very well. Mm-hmm. And if and people might disagree, disagree God bless. Sure. Think whatever you want. Uh, this is Once a big episode a, for me saying God bless. Yeah. I don't know why. Once upon a time in Hollywood also had uh, quite a bit of bad takes. Yes. The well, I would just oh oh the the revising history, mm-hmm. the Margot Robbie lines, mm-hmm. feet stuff. But again, as as long as it's as long as you're not DMing people who don't want that DM. You are allowed to be a person who fancies feet. I'm not one of them. Yeah, I mean, but you're I mean, allowed like, to like there, feet. And I, and I think Tarantino's that, not the only like only director or whatever to like find something sexually attractive or like be into a certain thing and use that in his art. Yeah, I don't know. I feel weird though with defending. There are a lot of things you can say about Tarantino movies, and generally when someone criticizes something about a movie and they're like, this director always does this, he must like this or he must hate this. I, I just say, we don't know that for a fact. We don't know that to be true. And I can't say this person does this or this person doesn't do this. Allegedly. Or or this is that person's motive or whatever, because I, we, we, I don't know the answer to that. So I always kind of take 50 feet steps away from, most art, you know, mm-hmm. because we just simply don't know. And I think it's dangerous to just kind of uh, assume things anyway. Uh, in the case of Tarantino, I'm like, Oh, I mean, he's probably the weirdest person in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have one final, uh, takeaway from why the, why the show is so bad. Okay. So much time wasted based on oh, we yes. talked about this the, yes. the, I, I know that they've done it in the past but it seemed like especially this year they were just like kind of trying to fill time and they they're the oscars is big on introing intros yes which is so so they show necessary the of the movie then they announce them one by one which it, well, it always just was. show the montages yeah. and then like have the text overlay and like, ever say the name Joaquin ever, Phoenix right. Joker and, and then what all the other nominees blah 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 while you're so showing the easy. clips and they like showed the montages and then they would come from the montage and be like nominated for best actor is it's, so weird and also like they were they had people introing presenters yes so that, that happens a lot too so that's weird necessary that's an award show move over the last. I don't know, 10 years, that's confused me. It's, well, I mean, it falls in line with like what Hollywood's been doing because now trailers have trailers before the trailer. Yeah. It's just so unnecessary. It's, it's a big waste of time. You can cut a lot of fat that way. All right, best dressed or Roman Griffin Davis and Archie Yates? Uh, let's do best dressed. Okay, best dressed, Zazie Beats, Brie Larson. Those are the two main ones for me. Uh, I really liked Saoirse Ronan's dress. It was very, just like something that I wouldn't envision, like colors that worked together that I didn't think would work together. There was the black, there was the gold, and then like a baby blue happening. Guess what? What's that? Uh, that's the first time Saoirse Ronan has ever involved working together with somebody that you didn't think that she'd work together with. No, very Nailed good. It. We're talking about Timothy Chalamet <laughs> and Greta Gerwig. Always, those three are always up to something. <laughs> Uh, we can get to worst dress now, by the way. Uh, okay. Timothy Chalamet. Uh, yeah, what was the... Was he like trying out for flight Top suit. Gun, a movie that's just, already been made? Just rocking a flight suit. Uh, best dressed, uh, I'll throw uh, I'll throw Spike Lee in that mix with his yeah. tribute to Kobe. That was pretty cool. I just like uh, I just like a different color outlining a lapel. I'm a big fan of that. So he had the Lakers colors doing that. Yeah, that's like uh, a great. It's a cool, cool shit. Like people yeah. should start start doing that more with like sports team colors. Why not? Yeah, like a that's, nice a nice green and gold. Yeah, That'll probably look sweet. Yeah, it's quite nice. Uh, Worst dress. Who you got? We're just just oh, Timothy Chalamet. Okay, He's he all only can, wins. Who I can't think of who else looked incredible. I, like the, the only times I like my heart stopped were 
Zazie Beats and Brie Larson. I hate to be this guy, yeah, because I'm never this guy. But I didn't pay attention to the to the best dress because no, me neither. I can't th- want to know what Sierra's was about the movies for me. That's right. Mm-hmm. I um. I didn't look up any like best dressed or worse. I'm just doing this purely from memory. What people, when you saw them, were like, wow, they look incredible. And then I think it was seemed just like everybody kind of played it down the middle too. Like nobody, yeah. nobody wanted to like command too much attention. I'll tell you this. I can't think of a suit that looked I- incredible really other than, other than Spike Lee. Oh, you know who looks pretty good? Um, uh, uh, Kristen Wiig. Oh yeah. Her, yeah. My dress was, yeah. was pretty nice. Yeah. That, that, that was very nice. Um, and her, her thing with uh, Maya Rudolph was very awesome. Good. Very funny. Um, all right. The most important part of the show, Roman Griffin Davis and Archie Yates. What are we going to do with these two? Because they're just the best. I'll tell you what we're going to do with them. We're going to put them in everything. We're going to make Home Alone <laughs> starring Archie Yates. If you folks don't know about that, they're making a Home Alone movie. And Archie Yates, a.k.a. Yorkie from Jojo Rabbit, is going to play Kevin. I don't know if he's going to play Kevin, but he's going to play the, the kid. It doesn't matter. What we're saying is there's going to be another Yorkie. thing <laughs> with Yorkie in it, and it is going to positively rule. What name fits him better? Archie, Archie or, or Yorkie? Yorkie? I actually think that Archie does. And Yorkie's a, yeah. a great name for his character. A lot of... We, we messed up, by the way, when we were talking about best hugs of the year. Just every time JoJo and Yorkie saw each other, they... We they, got the movie right. That's right. I did notice when watching JoJo Rabbit for like the 400th time, they really do play up the... Oh, they set They it play up, up yeah. dancing, they play up tying shoes, and they play up those Oxfords yeah. of Scar Joes. Mm-hmm. So there's like a scene when, when she's dancing up on the ledge, yeah, and right. it's just yeah. only those shoes... In her dancing. And the uh, the pool scene. The pool scene is the first time that I remembered seeing and noticing the shoes. Yeah. Which is they're at their uh, JoJo's rehabbing in the pool. Yeah. And she walks up on like the higher bench thing and yeah. like her just her shoes come into the frame. They really telegraph the tying of the shoes and the the shoes in that. So that's a I don't know, it's a more tasteful way of like that's not how Tarantino would have done it. <laughs> that's certainly not. He would have gotten like a forty-minute hanging scene. He would have been like, "Those Oxfords are disgusting. Let's get rid of them." <laughs> All right. So, so are we thinking like a loafer or something? <laughs> nah. Maybe like a boot. Mm. No. She just wearing socks? Definitely not. No, no, no. <laughs> we got her some like flip flops. Nope. Didn't have them back then. Got to go on natural. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they invented shoes back then. Yeah, they, they want to be authentic to the time. Right, right. They're like, but aren't you going to have like some crazy twist where like the imaginary Hitler is real or something? No, Stick we're doing an honest timeline. movie. <laughs> first honest. I don't know. Who you think you're talking made. to? <laughs> the, yeah, the the first honest <laughs> movie Quentin Tarantino ever made. <laughs> and so he can just get a little bit more, get a little those, uh, more little feet piggies. out of that, <laughs> right? And just get those dudigs. That's how you say oh. toes in Armenian. Nice dudigs. Uh, so all in all, fun Oscars night. Congratulations to Parasite. Better luck next year. To I don't know what really did. Did any movie get the shaft? I don't think so. The Irishman. But it didn't but, really oh, get the, it, the deserve it, shaft, it, if, if you're asking you. It deserved it. Marriage Story only won one award. I would say oh, if someone got the shaft this year, it was Randy Newman. Okay. I thought, that, I thought that he had the best score, and I thought that he had the best original song in, what, as you said, quite the weak year for original songs. Uh, also bummed, though, wouldn't have hated if Cynthia Revo won, because then she would have had herself an EGOT at age 33, which would which would be more I mean, impressive than yeah, but that's Saoirse like, Ronan being Saoirse Ronan it's at like twenty five? Too impressive. That's like it's like annoyingly impressive. Right. It's like hey, Egon's leave some cool. for the rest of us. Yes, it is. I would say that we talked a lot about egotting yesterday. Which to those of you who never watched Thirty Rock or I don't know, the term has become more popular these days. Anyway, Thirty Rock certainly didn't coin it, but it popularized it. Uh, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony, and in Thirty Rock. Tracy Morgan's character, Tracy Jordan, only cares about getting an EGOT, 
which is funny in that show because he's not very talented <laughs> and is always trying to, uh, I don't know, find shortcuts and do things specifically. So, like, this will get me Miami. This will... Anyway, um, I think w- I, that EGOTing is more impressive if at, like, 71, you knock off that last one. That is true. Like, like, and finally, at... I don't know. I'm trying to think of somebody, like... Uh, uh, like, like Beyonce anybody- goes on Broadway yeah. one year because she's like, you know what? Mama needs that Tony. Anybody can be impressive in like their first forty years of life. So like if you've if you've gotten the cards, yeah. and you like have had a lot of circumstances work in your favor, and you utilize that and get it done right. before you're forty, like that's great. But also, there's sort of more. It's more admirable if you stick with it, and then like, for sure, and then like you still have it enough at seventy, seventy one, seventy two to be able to cross off that final one. I'll give you two examples, and this isn't for an egot. It's simply to win an award, recognizing somebody is good at their job. Glenn Close and Shea Weber. At some <laughs> yeah. point, if one of those two ever wins, and I am adamant, you, we've talked about this in sports and otherwise. You don't get an award because you've been good at something for a long time. Yeah, like and the you've Oscar never won should it before. never be in a, a lifetime achievement. For award. sure. So last year when everyone was like, give it to Glenn Close, come on. Like, no. <laughs> she was not the best. Who was the best? Olivia Coleman? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. was she supporting or lead? No, Olivia Coleman was was lead. The, yeah, the, the favorite uh, really uh, Rachel was screwy. White's yeah. one uh, supporting. That's did she win? I think so, right? Wow. A- at any rate. Uh, I do remember the favorite pulled some real uh, spotlight shit with playing around with yeah. uh, what was submitted for what. But I remember last year being like, no, Glenn Close <laughs> wasn't the best. And it's like, why do you hate Glenn Close? Love her. She's fucking Glenn Close. She's amazing. She was second. Wasn't the best. She's yeah. come in second this year. I don't know. Maybe some other stuff was better than that, too. So and then Shea Weber also. Oh, man, I'll, I'll tell you, Shea, it's. Not looking like it's going to happen. Probably not. 